So we've done multiple videos and we'll never stop because this is extremely important and this point has to be reaffirmed again and again and again. But the economy does better when Democrats are in power. Democrats are simply better stewards of the economy and this is supported by basically every metric in modern US history going back 40 or 50 or 60 years depending on what metric you use. And it's always fun when conservatives and Republicans are forced to confront this fact, just to read their faces, hear it in their tone, see how they cover it, if they choose to cover it at all. And so I want to play a clip of the Fox News Network, the Fox Propaganda Network, as I call it, dealing with another economic development under the Biden administration, which is positive, Bidenomics at play in terms of GDP growth. I want to play this clip, but before I do, if you haven't yet, please hit that like, subscribe, and the alert bell, and maybe check out my Patreon. I'd really appreciate the support. So this is the Fox Propaganda Network's uh, Fox Business section, and this is about a 40-second clip, and they confront a revised update to GDP projections because initially, um, I actually read that the initial projection for the first quarter according to, um, oh, it wasn't Moody's Analytics, oh, who was it? Oh, who was it? Morgan Stanley. It was the investment firm. They'd initially projected, I think, a 0.5% GDP growth for the first half of 2023. Um, this one actually cites a different number from a different source, but basically the GDP growth, they had to revise it because it's higher, I think, than 2%. It was a startling contrast, okay, of what they initially expected, a much higher yield, which is really, really good for the economy. It's, it's proof that the economic recovery is still ongoing and the economy is expanding under President Biden to a greater extent than what was expected. Here's the clip from the Fox Propaganda Network and just, again, just kind of bask in the fact that Fox viewers are having to hear this fact, this uncomfortable fact, from um, the mouthpiece of one of the biggest cults in the history of human civilization. Take it away, Fox. Maria, 2.4%. Wow. This is the first read, the advanced read for second quarter GDP. Estimate was only for 1.8%. Talk about a strong economy. Uh, there goes that recession talk, right? Uh, and what's interesting here is the expectation was we were going to have a weaker Q2, this first read, than we had in Q1. Remember, we had a 2% read in Q1 for this year. We we're thinking we were going to have a slowdown. It's the opposite, 2.4%. And, you know, even the range, um, this is in the high end of the range uh, that economists were looking for. So that's pretty darn interesting. Uh, really, uh, Q4 was 2.6%. So economy is still strong. Real interesting here. So, again, note how they go out of their way to avoid using Joe Biden's name or the Democrats' name. They would never, ever, ever be so circumspect if a Democrat, excuse me, a Republican were in office, certainly somebody like Donald Trump. And, again, I want to be clear. In the interest of good faith, are presidents single-handedly responsible for the economy, good or bad? No, they're not, right? The power of the president, so interesting, uh, if you look at political theory and, and you know constitutional frameworks, the president is the single most powerful person in the country, if not the world, for a variety of reasons. And certainly they do have an impact on the economy. Things that the president says rhetorically can shape markets. If a president says something you know, economically controversial, like for example, if, he, if, if the president said something like, you know, said something like the part of their agenda would be to go after a particular industry, then it's entirely possible that that might shape futures, right? If the president says something reckless, it could impact markets. So the power of the president in terms of their stature is incredible, but it's indirect. Like the president can't snap their fingers and control gas prices. This was something that was really frustrating when President Biden took office and, you know, COVID, the, the pandemic was dying down in terms of you know, we had a vaccine rollout and there was more testing and people started to travel more. There were fewer lockdowns and restrictions and all the things. You saw, you know, the, the supply of gasoline had been basically cut in large part actually due to actions of the Trump administration in 2018. A lot of people don't talk about that. But then demand was down during COVID, right? So gas prices were relatively low because no one was going anywhere. Then as President Biden presided over an extremely successful vaccine rollout, people were like, okay, well, I'll start traveling more. And life began to, you know, slowly uh, open back up to normal. So people were driving more, which meant the demand for gas skyrocketed, even though supply was relatively the static, right? So that led to high gas prices, especially with these oil companies, um, you know, Shell and, and, and uh, Exxon trying to maximize their profits. It was insane, the windfall that they got. But the bottom line is everybody on the right and some independents were blaming President Biden. Why can't Biden control gas prices? But because the president doesn't have a lever where he can go, 
you know, and make gas prices low. Do you think if that lever existed, why wouldn't Biden pull that lever? That would be better for him politically. Clearly, the lever doesn't exist. And if the lever did exist, why wasn't it 50 cents under Trump? The lever doesn't exist, folks. You need to use your head. But that said, the president is still economically very uh, influential, just in a very indirect way. And so my point is this. If you want to take the position, listen, we can't give Joe Biden credit for the economy, or at least all the credit. Fair enough. But that means he shouldn't get the blame when the economy is bad unless you can decisively and compellingly prove, and that's a high, that's a high threshold, right, that he is somehow responsible for the state of the economy. The problem is Republicans try to have it both ways. When the economy is good under a Democrat, they say, well, Democrat didn't have anything to do with that. But when an economy is struggling in some respect under a Democrat, then they say, well, it was all the Democrats' fault. It's a hypocrisy. It's a double standard. Now, for my money, I think that you have to have a consistent standard no matter what. And so, again, if you want to blame Biden for the state of the economy, then I'm going to give Biden all the credit for the economy when it's good. And if you don't want to do that, then we got to do the opposite. But anyway, in the interest of good faith, to the extent that this matters politically, this is good news for President Biden because he can say on his watch, the economy is doing well. 13 million jobs created, higher than expected GDP growth again and again and again. Um, you know, unemployment down at a consistent level that we haven't seen in 50 or 60 years. This is extraordinary. So this is good news for President Biden, good news for Democrats, and good news for Bidenomics.